I would like to give uh, some overview of uh, clean tech uh, in the Netherlands, um, but next to that, um, our own company, Icos Capital, our investments, um, and the areas where we invest. Um, and also take an example, and for that I brought something which uh, <coughs> you can uh, uh, think of what it is, and uh, later on I'll explain exactly. Um, <clears throat> to give you some background, uh, Icos Capital was founded in 2006 um, by an experienced team of both venture capitalists coming from Alpinvest, uh, the big uh, private equity investor in the Netherlands, and some uh, experienced uh, people from the cleantech sectors. We set up uh, two funds and we have around 75 million under investment uh, today in nine cleantech companies. And we work with corporations uh, together very much um, uh, in, the en in the energy area, in the recycling, green building, food. Uh, actually, uh, you can discuss whether that's clean tech or not, but for our investor group, it's, it's an interesting area. Biochemicals and also in mobility. Um, <clears throat> we have so far invested in, uh, in nine portfolio companies. Um, to go uh, quickly through them, uh, the first one is a waste to energy uh, company basically gasification of uh, not too complicated waste. <coughs> Sorry. The second one is uh, uh, a recycling company that takes back copper out of steel scrap. Very interesting uh, business case. Um, the third company is a cloud computing company, doing very well, offering a platform for big corporations and, and other clients. Uh, the fourth one is uh, Dutch Rainmaker. It's, uh, it's a windmill that uh, takes water out of the air. So it uses wind energy, doesn't produce electricity, but makes heat and cold, and in that way it condenses water out of the air. Um, the next one is Enzatec, is a chemical hazardous waste smelting company, uh, where we build a factory in the north of the Netherlands. And then we have Photonol, which is a direct conversion of CO2 into uh, biochemicals, uh, biochemical building blocks. Um, then we have two companies in the food area, a food ingredients company and a food screening um, and mi microbial selecting uh, platform. And finally, there's Biaqua, which is a water technology uh, company, and actually um, one of the people of Biaqua is here and will uh, give a specialized talk on that. Um, <clears throat> what I think is special in what we do is we, we go in very early, in the early stage of, uh, of technology, and we try to build the company together um, with our corporations, with the team, and with our financial expertise. So it means we, we do take very early stage risk, uh, build it into pilot stage, and then build it all the way into full-scale implementation. And I think that's a very unique model, and you have to bring all the expertise needed from the early stage to the full-scale, and there our corporate investors are really of uh, great help. Um, <clears throat> well, to give you some overview of clean tech in the Netherlands, uh, actually, uh, this is a list I found uh, in a study by Ronald Berger, uh, and it shows that we are not doing too well. We are somewhere in the middle of the crowd. Um, that has to do, I think, with uh, the government uh, not being very active lately in supporting this field. Um, we're part of the general innovation uh, agenda. Um, all the special subsidy schemes that have been there uh, a couple of years ago have basically reduced uh, to a large extent. So that's the, the, the bad part of, uh, of uh, the climate in the Netherlands. I think the good part is that there is a lot of technology that has been developed over the last 20 years in university, in uh, corporations. There is um, a real interest from the corporate investors to, uh, to look for the new innovations here. And there is a lot of uh, early stage startup companies uh, getting very active in the clean tech uh, space. So um, as we say in Dutch, the class is half full or half empty. It's uh, how do you look at it? I think at the moment we're in the middle, but I'm sure that um, in the next couple of years we're definitely growing um, in that list. And uh, to add on that, there's a lot of capital actually uh, currently being invested in the different regions of the Netherlands. Um, <clears throat> that is because the, the regional governments sold their, their stakes in the energy companies. Actually, we sold the energy companies to, uh, to RWE and to Vattenfall, and that generated a lot of cash for the governments. And the regional governments are reinvesting this in the different um, sectors of renewable energy. So in the different areas, you have all kinds of different uh, initiatives. Um, if you ask me, it's a little bit too much of initiatives, but uh, everybody's working there. So I think a lot of it is coming, uh, going to come out in, uh, in the next uh, couple of years. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is, looks maybe a bit of a complicated picture, but this is, this is the model we're operating in. So we have our corporate investors in the different areas of clean tech, in water, in energy, materials, and in bio-based chemicals. And um, <clears throat> 
together with them, we are screening the opportunities and we're using their help and their insight in the market and their insight in scaling up of technology. I think that's one of the most important values that, um, to really, uh, like I said, invest in early stage uh, of companies and really build them uh, to the later stage and to successful full scale implementations. Um, <clears throat> As an example, this is, uh, and this is where this comes from, this is actually chemical waste. It's, uh, it used to be very hazardous and dangerous and you wouldn't touch it, but it went through our investment uh, Enzar Tech and what comes out is a clean end product. Um, it's a waste smelting technology. It means that uh, you collect all your waste in a big, I always say big pan like uh, Asterix and Obelix if you uh, remember and you just uh, <coughs> steer around um, a bit to, uh, to destroy basically all the hazardous chemical molecules at this temperature of 1450 degrees Celsius. And what you get is, uh, is um, an organic fraction that comes out as, uh, as energy uh, or as a gas which you can uh, use to make steam and, and, and use in the industry. And, and a rest product which is uh, completely safe and it can be used in, uh, in construction industry. Um, and this is how we involved our corporations really in the early stage. So when the company came to us, they had uh, uh, two scientists that worked for Shell and Billiton, and they had two entrepreneurs that um, worked in the, in the waste markets, and they had an idea. And um, we involved our corporations, we involved Imtech because they know how to build plants, and we involved the Purec because they know everything about chemical processes. And together, we worked up this, uh, this opportunity into, um, into a, a real full-scale implementation. Uh, we uh, secured about 10 million financing uh, from the banks. We secured co-investors and the subsidies. We built this plant, 15 million, and uh, actually it, it's working now and it's producing this, uh, this material. Very attractive business case. Um, so that is, that is an example of, uh, of how we have been working together between all the parties, so between the investors, um, between our, uh, say, venture capital experience to make sure that we structure such deals in such a way that uh, the value creation is there for everybody and that there's no uh, early exits, uh, so to say, to the, to the corporates. So you have to uh, play extra attention there. And, of course, the, the expert team from the, from the core team. Um, I think that's my last slide, so I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions... Find me.